Welcome to Red Dead Redemption 2. Today we have 107 mods that we've compiled from previous videos, so maybe you'll find one that you missed, kind of like this smoky complete one, or maybe the legendary animal companion. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy. The first one, as you can guess, is Michael Myers. This mod lets you swap to Michael Myers using Rampage Trainer, so you'll have his iconic mask as well as his jumpsuit and boots and it's relatively easy to swap to them. You just need to go into Rampage Trainer, go into the player menu, go into wardrobe, and then into model changer. You're gonna go all the way to the bottom to the custom input, and then all you have to type in is Myers. Once you do that, your character will change to Michael Myers, and you'll be able to roleplay to your heart's content. If Michael Myers isn't your thing though, then how about Jason Voorhees? So now you can roleplay and recreate the events of Friday the 13th. This one is unique as well, because it comes with different outfit variations. So you can go with a heavy coat version, a medium jacket version, some casual attire, or maybe something more formal. Whatever you pick though, you're sure to be the talk of the town. If anything, you could use these two mods for your next Halloween themed playthrough. This next mod isn't Halloween themed, or even related to Red Dead Redemption 2 at all, but I'd say it kind of fits. And if you know what game this armor is actually from, brownie points for you. These mods are called the NCR Veteran Ranger Helmet and the NCR Ride Gear. This mod will allow you to patrol the lands as an NCR Ranger, all while sporting some pretty cool armor. Both of these mods replace clothing items already found in the game, so the NCR helmet replaces the Viking helmet, and then the ride gear actually replaces the rugged Wrangler vest. The mod author has said that they are going to do the NCR cloak, or the coat, so once that comes out, you'll have the whole shebang. But for now, any duster type coat does fit this build pretty nicely. This is definitely one of my more favorite replacer mods. It looks like a lot of attention to detail went into this, and it just looks really nice. This mod for Red Dead Redemption 2 adds thousands of accessories and weapons into the game. This is a recent release on Nexus mods as well, and is called the Trifecta Redux. Now this is a merge of a few popular mods, so this combines 1899 Firearms, Lions DLC, and Eastern's Epic Extras. So this essentially makes it easy to combine these three powerhouses of mods, so you can use them all at the same time in the game. If you're familiar with the original Wyoms DLC and Triple E merge, there would usually be a Wyoms DLC option, as well as an Eastern options for clothing and accessories. This mod consolidates this into one category, the Trapper's Traveling Tailor Ship, and in here is where you're going to find all the Wyoms DLC and Eastern Epic stuff. Now you won't get all of the items you're accustomed to with this merge of the mods, but from the description on the mod page, items were removed that didn't really fit properly with both Arthur and John. So whatever outfit or accessory you choose, you should see little to no clipping, whether you like playing as Arthur or John. And it removes some of the bloat from the catalog from previous entries. You still get over 1800 items with the YM's DLC, and then of course over 400 different accessories with the Eastern Epics extras. So you're still getting the bang for your buck. This even merges Gon Pachiro's fancy atelier as well, so you can get those nice custom fancy suits for Arthur or John. You're also able to have modular weapon equipment, so you can remove your holsters, whether it's your primary holster or your offhand holster. And I know a lot of people don't like to play with the satchel, you can remove that as well. Now the next part of the merge 1899 firearms is something I was unfamiliar with. But this mod offers some extensive firearm changes as well as new realistic ammo types. So now when you browse the gunsmith in the ammunition category, you have a lot of different ammo options available to you. These ammos do come in small, medium, and large variants, which you can use to hunt animals. So for example, if you buy a large round, that would be more oriented to hunting a bear. And then vice versa, using a small round, you'd be hunting a rabbit. So as you can see, this adds a lot of different variants for your weapons when it comes to the ammo available, but you also get some new weapons as well. So you have a few new revolvers with names for them, all with their own unique stats to bring even more variety into your gunslinging. This merge even includes three new weapons, which consists of Arthur Schofield Revolver, an 1897 Slamfire, and a Remington Model 1858 Revolver. So if the already abundant weapon choices weren't enough for you, you have even more to choose from. There's also been some quality of life to the wardrobe menu, so equipping your favorite outfits or piecing together your own unique outfit will be a bit more streamlined. The merge even comes with restored John Martian's beta features, so you have a more classic look for John for his head and body, so you know this mod is packed with content. Let me know if you'll be trying out this mod for yourself. The Trifecta Redux does definitely come packed with some goodies, and I can see a lot of people trying this out. Now a mod I know you'll love is called Proning, and this mod allows you to go prone. 
So now you're able to crawl on the ground to get the sneak on your enemy. So you can crawl forwards, you can go backwards of course with its own unique animation, and then you can even go left or right. You can even sprint scrawl which uses up your stamina. The only downside to this mod is you can't aim and prone at the same time. But who knows, it could be added in a future update. Now another mod you might want to consider to give yourself a little variety is called Florida Vegetation for Swamps. And this is a simple mod that adds a few new plant types to the swamps. So you'll see new plant varieties in the Lemoyne area, which will include longleaf pines, sawgrass palmetto, and palm trees as well. Now I think the mod author plans to do a big overhaul for this area, which will be called Big Florida. And they say that's gonna essentially take over the entire map. So that could be interesting. We'll have to check that out once it comes out. But now let's get into a few mods that are essentially must-haves. This next one is called Realistic Explosions. In this mod reworks damage, smoke, visual effects, and other dynamite projectile data to make them more realistic and therefore more, well, believable. So for instance, dynamites. The blast radius has been calibrated, so there's a more focused impact and the damage for dynamites have been increased by 40%. Molotovs have been enhanced to cover more of the surface, so you get three times the coverage with each of your throws, not to mention the new smoke effects to go with it. Exploding bullet ammo now has micro explosive charges, which unleashes a kinetic energy upon impact and increases the damage output. Same with the dynamite on the arrows, this will give you more explosive power as well as some cool new visuals. So if you're looking for a mod to increase your explosive capabilities, this one is a must have. You can't go wrong with new explosives. Our next mod is another take on ragdoll physics. This mod is called Raro or Realistic Euphoria Ragdoll Overhaul. And this mod aims to make ragdoll physics more realistic. So NPCs will stumble less and fall more directly. Kind of like how it would be in real life. NPCs will writhe in pain if you shoot them too many times without dying. The damage from bullets have been aimed to make more realistic and falling affects both NPCs and yourself when you get damaged. This mod is even compatible with Ped Damage Overhaul and YM's Bloodlust, so you can make it even more realistic. There are a lot of good Euphoria Ragdoll mods out there, so even if you don't specifically like this one, there are a bunch more for you to test out so you can find what you like. Now this mod is not necessarily new, but this mod boasts a bunch of new features that could overhaul your combat experience. This mod is called Combat Experience, and this adds a few new features that you can toggle on and off in the any file to give combat a sort of new spin. So now while aiming in combat, you can zoom in to get a more over the shoulder view. The camera will have a slight shake whenever you're shot to really up the ante. And now if you're using the machete or the cleaver, you have the chance to slice off different body parts. So parts such as the head, the legs, or the arms can be sliced off mid combat. Definitely a cool thing to spice up your combat experience in RDR2. This mod is called Gun Tricks. And this lets you perform various gun tricks with Arthur or John. So you can flip up your weapons up into the sky. You can bring them up high and twirl them like helicopters. You can do a sort of figure eight type pattern where you're spinning your guns with the flick of the wrist. And then you can even do a trick where you flip the gun right behind your back and you catch it while you keep spinning. You'll also have some pretty cool unique holstering animations once you're done. So you can get some pretty cool gunplay cinematics once you master your spins. The mod is pretty simple to use as well. So once you have it installed, all you need to do is equip your weapons and then quickly double tap the holster button. This will initiate your default spin, but by pressing various buttons on your controller, you can seamlessly transition between spins until you find the one that you want. You can spin and walk at the same time as well, as well as change up the animations as you walk to, and you don't have to use two weapons for it to work. It works even if you're a single revolver type of gunslinger. So whether you like one or two, you can choose. This is one of those mods once you try it out, you can't go back. Do you need even more accessories for your Red Dead Redemption 2 playthrough? Yeah, me too. There's a mod called the Eastern Epic Extras, and this mod is absolutely jam-packed with accessories. You'll have access to new belts, more bandoliers, new satchels, backpacks, and even new hairs and beards. You get over 200 new accessories to choose from, which you can access at any trapper, and this adds a bunch of accessories. So you can get a few hats that Dutch's gang had. You can get all black versions of the hats, or even all brown versions. They even have a few different beanies for you to choose from. You have a couple new shirts to choose from, all with their own unique color scheme. You have a few new vests, including Charles's casual vest and Charles' hunting vest. You also have a few new coats, ranging from dusters to clothes coats, different kind of jackets, 
and even Micah's leather duster. You have a few new jean choices, another suspender option, a furry variant of the gloves, full chaps or half chaps, more spurs, and you actually have some pretty unique boots now too, especially when you go into the miscellaneous category. There's some pretty cool boots in this, such as the all furry ones, or you can even get some pretty snazzy dress shoes. You also have some additional accessories such as the different cloaks you can have. You get a bunch of different neckwear options, 10 additional new belts to choose from, of course a few new weapon belts such as the police duty belt and even John's belt from RDR1. You get a few more bandolier options and you actually get a decent selection of different kinds of satchels too. Some of them are even pouches instead. You have 15 new jewelry options so you can get a whole bunch of different rings, watches, or even get the pimp's drip. But probably the most exciting category is the accessories and you have 20 different options here to choose from. So if we choose the extra firepower option, you'll see that Arthur has more guns than he can handle. You can pick the pack, shawl, and accessories, and this will equip Arthur with a shawl that covers his head. You'll see he now has a backpack, and now he even has a canteen. You can even go for something simple such as just a canteen, a simple cup on the belt, binoculars, or even the Fusar sword, which will equip a sword on Arthur's side. Eastern's Epics definitely comes with a bunch of different extra accessories for you to have fun with. Are you tired of seeing an old wrinkled Arthur Morgan? Well, you're in luck. With the young clean Arthur mod, you'll now have a younger version of Arthur that's ready to conquer the West. Young clean Arthur is sort of a mod pack that aims to age down Arthur Morgan. It makes him look much more healthy and he'll have considerably less wrinkles on his face. There's even options to clean up some of his default outfits in the game. So for instance, he'll have a cleaner gunslinger coat than you're accustomed to. This mod is even compatible with changing the hair color or eye color of Arthur too. So you'll have even more options to customize your Arthur Morgan. So if you're looking for a playthrough where Arthur actually looks healthy and not about to keel over and die, this may be the mod you're looking for. Alternatively, if you're looking for an older Arthur Morgan, the mod Old Arthur Morgan 1919 is for you. This mod brings Arthur Morgan to the year 1919 with wrinkles galore, great hair textures for the top of the head and the beards, but still the tough Arthur Morgan you know and love. So whatever Arthur you're trying to play as, young or old, you have the options to choose. If there's one mod you need in Red Dead Redemption 2, then it has to be Rampage Trainer. This is a handy menu system that allows you to basically do anything. So you can go from John to Arthur whenever you want to. You can actually change to any NPC that you've ever seen in the game, which is actually pretty insane. You can be whoever, wherever, and whenever you want. You can even roleplay having Lumbago as uncle. For a few of the NPCs, you can even change the wardrobe on the fly too. But humans aren't the only thing you can be. You can turn yourself into a horse if you want and go live out your wildest horsey dreams. Or maybe horses ain't your jam. You can be any animal you've ever seen in the game as well, including a grizzly bear. You can also do things such as change the time of day. So you can go from nighttime to evening all the way to the morning. You can change the weather with just the press of a button. And you can even have blizzards where there's not supposed to be any blizzards. You can give yourself millions of dollars. Give yourself unlimited items, decrease or increase your honor on the fly, get rid of any bounties you have or increase your bounties. You can unveil the entire map, unlock outfits, weapons, recipes, or if you want a few of those achievements unlocked, you can discover all the herbs, fishes, gangs, cigarette cards, and it even gives you the ability to complete all of the challenges, all just by pressing a button. There's even a cool little feature to where you can teleport directly to any of the collectibles. So for instance, if you want to visit any grave location, you pick the grave of your choice and you'll be sent into the heavens and transported directly to that grave location. So when you come to, you'll spawn directly in front of your grave. There's even features to spawn boats or carriages, give yourself infinite ammo. You can even turn your gun supersized and deal some major damage to your enemies. The world is your oyster with Rampage Trainer. We'll start off with the first mod, 1899 Happy Ending. And I know a lot of you will absolutely love this mod. This mod is a chapter six save file, but with a little bit of a twist. The main story mode has been completed. You still get to play as the main man, Arthur Morgan, and the remaining members of the gang are now just living their best life over at Horseshoe Overlook. So unlike the original in game, you still get to interact with the gang over at the beginning camp. There are still plenty of things to do as well. Since this is a minimal completion file, all of the side missions have been unlocked for you to complete. All unlockable horses have been unlocked in the stables. No random events have been triggered and you'll have your basic weapon loadout available to use. Arthur has also been cured of his sickness 
this so you can play as the healthy Arthur you know and love. You're free to interact with the original gang supplies, greet or antagonize the remaining gang members, and just be able to free roam with the game already complete. Definitely a cool little mod to have, especially if you prefer to play Arthur instead of John. The next mod we have is called Ped Combat Enhanced, and this changes various aspects of the combat experience. So pets will now have the bruiser brawl style instead of their default one. NPCs will now counter your attacks more often. You'll get into more grapple situations and then the act of choking an NPC will last longer as well. This is a good addition to the mod bar brawls, especially if you like to get into scuffles while having a little drink because it allows more of the environment to kind of be destructible. The mod also changes the NPC's health so you won't be able to knock them out in two or three hits. Next we have a mod called Disable Eyewitnesses, so now you can commit crimes without any eyewitnesses, whether you're in town or out in the wilderness doing your business. This even disables the scripted shop witnesses, so you can rob any of these shops without having the game auto eyewitness you. This only works for the civilian aspect, so if an actual lawman sees you commit a crime, the law will still be after you, so just keep that in mind. Next we have a mod called Realistic Weapon Sounds, and this mod is from the same mod creator that made the original Realistic Weapon Sounds from GTA 5. So if you ever play with that mod, you know that it's high quality. This mod will give you new Realistic Weapon Sounds for all your weapons, and this aims to give the most realistic acoustic experience for your ears. So you'll be able to hear the sounds in first person. In third person, sounds coming from a distance will be different. Sounds from explosives will be enhanced as well. And you even have new sounds depending on if you're outdoors or indoors. I'd say this sounds mod is definitely worth checking out, especially if you like a little bit more bass in your shots. This definitely gives you a different kind of experience and adds a little bit of fun into your gameplay. Next up we have a mod called NPC Dual Wield, and this is a simple script mod that allows some NPCs to dual wield. So instead of all NPCs only having one pistol on their belt, you'll see NPCs with two revolvers instead. So this will allow them to actually dual wield in combat as well. Now this mod only works for the ambient peds you run into, not any of the actual story mode characters, but this little script mod does add some more oomph into the game. Now this next mod is called Le Florida, and this mod turns the entirety of the Lemoyne region into Florida, well at least plant wise. So you'll see new palm trees in the middle of Saint Denis, you'll see new longleaf pines, sawgrass, and Spanish moss scattered throughout the Lemoyne region. So welcome to Florida and Red Dead Redemption 2. Next up we have the NCR Trooper Uniform, which adds a pretty nice uniform from Fallout. You have the NCR logo on the chest plate, the boot, pants, and then even a canteen and pouch. And oddly enough, it looks like it fits in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now this next mod you either love or hate. This is called the Emoji Honor Mod. So now on the honor bar, the original symbol will now be replaced with an emoji. So if you're positive honor, you'll have a little angel emoji. But if you're on the opposite side of the law, you'll now have a devil face emoji. So now it's a little bit easier to see if you are a good or a bad guy. Next we have a mod called Upscaled All-in-One Mega Pack. And this is a pack of mods all combined into one. So you have about 42 different mods all combined into one mega pack. So you have a bunch of different items that have been upscaled from weapons, textures, effects, and even various animals. This mod really simplifies the process because before you had to install each mod one by one. And this mod combines everything for you to make it even simpler. Now you have a mod called Instant Travel. This mod allows you to to instantly travel to anywhere you're trying to go. All you need to do is place a waypoint on the map and then you can either lead your horse or initiate the cinematic camera to have the option to fast travel. And once you press the button to fast travel, it'll instantly teleport you to your given location. Your cores will be drained depending on the distance and the time of day will move forward. So this creates a seamless yet immersive experience without feeling like you're cheating while fast traveling. You can initiate this during combat, law pursuits, and even during missions. And make sure your horse is in top condition because if you try to fast travel without your horse being properly fed, it's not gonna work. Next we have the final piece from the NCR outfit we showcased in our last video. This is the NCR Ranger coat and this is a replacement for the duster coat in game that lets you look like a ranger from Fallout New Vegas. It's got the NCR logo on the shoulders and you see bullet holes scattered throughout the coat. This somehow is the best duster coat in the game now. I could only use this coat and be satisfied. It looks that good. It's time to get out the desert though. It's time to take a trip on a boat. This next mod is called Boat Service and this mod allows you to go to a few different locations. So you can buy a ticket to Blackwater or you can buy yourself a ticket to Guarma. 
you'll get a nice little immersive cutscene and be on your way. So you'll be able to explore Guarma whenever you want to. You even have a nice horse stationed at the beginning to ride throughout the island. And then once you want to go back, you have the option of going back to Saint Denis or Blackwater. So this is a pretty handy mod to get to a few places a little bit quicker. All right, I promise this is the last Fallout mod we have, at least unless there's some new ones that come out. This mod is called NCR Ranger Inspired Character. And instead of replacing clothing, this is a custom model you spawn in with Rampage Trainer. So you'll get the NCR helmet, you'll get the trench coat with custom gloves, pants, and your boots. And you'll also get a few different accessories, such as this bandolier, a new chest plate, satchels covering your chest, and then a bag on the back. Definitely a cool mod to get your Fallout fix. Next up, we have a mod I think is really cool, and this is called Percentage Cores. So now your core is right above the minimap. Instead of just seeing a bar where you have to guesstimate where you're at, you'll now see an actual percentage. So you'll know exactly what kind of condition your character is in, which will make it a lot easier to see at a glance. We also have a new ragdoll mod that came out, and this one is called Brutal Motion. This mod is meant to give you some hyper-realistic physics that has been rebuilt from the ground up. Pets will now stumble, roll, and contort in different ways that would mirror what you see in the real world. Every encounter will be unique based on where you decide to hit your opponent, so every combat experience will seem authentic. No two shootouts will ever be the same again, and this new Euphoria mod is definitely worth checking out. It definitely is pretty brutal. Now we potentially save the best mod for last, and this is called AAMP or Artwork Arthur Morgan Project. This brings the official Arthur Morgan artwork project you've seen and brings it in game with all new 4 and 2K textures. This mod changes Arthur's face and body textures, giving him darker brown hair, a meaner look to his face, and a new scar on his cheek. You even get a lore friendly tattoo across his chest. Plus this mod is fully compatible with YM's triple E merge and Arthur Morgan's outfit overhaul, which is the next mod we've added. The Arthur Morgan outfit overhaul aims to change the dull and boring outfits of Arthur Morgan and make them darker and more interesting. So there's a lot of retextures that were inspired by the beta content and different artwork work so most of your default gear will now have darker color variations and they have been upscaled so for instance his default gunslinger coat has been upscaled and is a bit darker as well as arthur's hat which is now a darker brown variant as well but they do have a couple of different color options for some of the outfits so if you don't necessarily want the dark brown look there are other styles for you to choose from and since this is compatible with the YMs and Eastern Epics merge, there is no reason for you not to have this. We'll start off with one of the most frequently asked about mods, and that is the graphic setup that I use. I use a mod called Visual Redemption, which adds a bit of vibrancy to the game, enhances the textures of RDR2, as well as a bunch of other post effects. On top of that, I use the Visual Redemption Reshade to give it that extra kind of oomph. So combining these two mods will give you the ultimate graphical experience in my opinion. So if you like the colors to pop out and the game to be a bit brighter, this is definitely the graphics overhaul for you. If this look really isn't your style, do not fret. I've gone over a bunch of different graphics overhauls. So if you're looking for a more dark gritty vibe or something else altogether, be sure to check out some of my previous mod showcases because I guarantee you'll find something that you like. The next mod on our list is called Personal Boat. There's a new boat shop located in the grass at this point on the map and here you'll have access to a new shopkeeper. Here you'll have a bunch of different boat options and after you buy a boat, you have a couple of different customization options as well. So you can change the color of your boat, you can change a few of the accessories and and then even add some lanterns for your night escapades. You're free to captain your new boat, and this mod even injects other boats into the water that you'll be able to rob and pillage. So it adds almost these pirate-esque missions for you to do. Plus, wherever you decide to disembark at, your boat just won't disappear. It'll save wherever you leave it. And if you happen to forget where your boat was, you'll have a handy dandy boat marker to remind you. And since we have a personal boat, we need a personal wagon, right? This mod is called Hunting Wagon, and this allows you to do a bunch of the same things the personal boat mod does. Here you'll have access to your own personal wagon that you can fully customize. So you'll have various options to outfit your wagon, and then you can go and explore the wilderness. Now you are able to put pelts and other items in the back, but the only problem is it doesn't save if you leave the wagon. Your wagon can also be damaged, but with the handy menu, you can repair it on the fly. And if you happen to be a long distance away from your wagon, if 
you hold down on the horse whistle button, your wagon will be transported to the nearest road. It's definitely a cool tool to use to go hunting and collect a bunch of pelts, but definitely don't use it for long time storage. Next up is a combination of two mods. The first one is called Dog Companion. Dog Companion allows you to pet any dog and have them follow you. And this dog does have some perks. They'll attack your enemies to defend you, and they can even help you track down animals to hunt. So it's definitely a worthwhile add-on. Now we've combined the Dog Companion mod with the mod called Legendary Animal Companion. So instead of having a dog as our companion, you can choose any legendary animal in the game to be your partner instead. And the same as the dog. They'll attack your enemies as well as hunt down other animals for you too. It's just a lot funner to have a cougar following you instead of a dog. Next up we have a mod called Dual Wield. And this mod gives you the option to remove your offhand hand holster at will. Once you target your horse, you'll see a button to prompt you to remove your offhand. And once you do so, your offhand holster will go bye bye. But the cool thing about this mod is that it saves which holster you are using. So whenever you want that weapon back, you can easily grab it and retrieve it whenever you want. Next, of course, is the ultimate mod. This is called Rampage Trainer. This is my go to trainer of choice. This has the most options out of any trainer out there and it basically has everything you need. This trainer even allows you to play as Arthur even after you beat the game. You can spawn in as any other NPC in the game. You can play as an animal or horse, save custom outfits, easily remove and manage your weapons, control things such as the time, the weather, or even teleport all around the map. There are so many options with this trainer. I made like a 20 minute video just dedicated to this one mod alone. So if you want to see the full details of what this thing can do, I will leave a link to that video down below in the description. We also have a mod called Auto Greet. So as you're walking around town, Arthur will automatically greet NPCs that say hello to him. So you won't have to greet NPCs manually anymore. We also have a mod called Auto Loot, which allows you to automatically loot NPCs. So as soon as you hit the kill shot in an NPC, whatever lootable items they may have had will go directly into your inventory. So now you never wonder if you miss something, you'll know exactly what you get as soon as you kill them. We also have a mod called Bodyguard Spawner, which allows you to import a custom bodyguard. So there are various options when it comes to this. So you can choose from any NPC in the game. You can go to the gang members and of course spawn anybody from Dutch's gang. So once you spawn them in, you'll be able to choose their outfit and you're even able to choose some of their weapons. You're able to have up to seven bodyguards at a time. And once you get on your horse, your bodyguards will saddle up as well. So if you really wanted to, you could explore this game with most of the gang. Now, another pretty useful mod is called Camp Anywhere. And by pressing the K key on the keyboard, you'll be able to set up camp, put a bedroll down, build a campfire or set up a tent. And then of course at your camp, you're able to rest and cook your food as well as sit or sleep in your tent. Now a crowd favorite as well as one of my favorite mods is called Gun Tricks. This mod gives you the ability to spin your weapon. So whether you're dual wielding or single wielding, you'll have the ability to spin your revolvers. You can do four different tricks such as the alternating flips. You can do the spin up, the figure eight toss, and then the last one is the shoulder toss. And then you'll have a cool animation whenever you holster your weapons as well. And that's pretty much it. A simple mod, but it does make you feel like a true gunslinger. We also have a mod called Dark Map, which puts the original map into dark mode. So no longer will you be blinded by that bright map. And I'd wager to say it's easier to see some of these locations as well. Dark Map is the only map mod I use, and for good reason. We've also beefed Arthur up. So instead of his original scrawny look, we're using a mod called Muscular Morgan. This mod essentially gives Arthur a lot more muscle mass. So you'll see his arms are a bit bigger, his chest, shoulders are wider, all around him more beefy Arthur. I'd say a majority of the clothes work well with it as well. So you might find one or two shirts or coats that won't fit correctly or clip, but for the most part you're safe. Now a mod that's non-negotiable is the Smoking Complete mod. This mod allows you to smoke a cigarette at will or if you so choose a cigar instead. So you'll look like a true gunslinger, cigar in hand and spinning those weapons. Plus it's not just for cosmetic purposes. As you smoke it up, your dead eye core will regenerate. So there is a really good purpose behind this mod. We also have a mod called Remove Speed Limits, which allows you to adjust your speed in almost any situations. So with the tap of a button, you can go from a fast walk over to your more slow defined walk, and then of course vice versa. So if the slow and controlled walk is a little bit too slow for you, well now, you have options. Now for those nighttime adventures, we have a mod called Stash Your Lantern. This mod will allow you to stash your weapon on your gun belt, so you have both hands free to equip your weapon. 
so no longer will you be subjected to only using a revolver and a lantern, you can use a lantern and whatever weapon you want. Another useful mod is called Unlimited Horse Whistle Distance, so wherever your horse is on the map, after you whistle, your horse will come galloping towards you no matter where you're at. At any distance, your horse will hear you. Now I know there is a cheat you can use for this same effect, but using the in-game cheats will disable trophies and saving. Adding this mod allows you to save the game and you can still get achievements. So there's that. We also changed the way the camera looks in game. We've added a mod called different camera angle and this mod adjusts the angle to get more of the character in frame. The old camera is angled slightly up so you see more of the torso but with this mod you'll be able to see more of your character's body which in turn will allow you to see more of his drip. This is one of those mods I do not play without. If you're a fan of using the bow and arrows we have a mod called quiver restored which adds the cut quiver back into the game. So now whenever you have the bow and arrow equipped you'll now equip your quiver on the side too. And then for the rest of the weapons we have a mod called realistic weapon audio overhaul. This changes the sounds of all the guns in the game to give them a more realistic sound. And the difference between vanilla and this is phenomenal. Your ears will be pleased. Combined with the mod gunmetal rework, you have a whole new weapon experience. Gunmetal rework reworks all the metals for the various guns. So you'll have more lifelike gun textures with a nice little sheen to them as well. This one happens to be my favorite overhaul for the weapons, but there are a bunch of different ones on Nexus mods. So if you want to go for a more rusty style, they have that too. And then as you've seen we have the rifle holster mod which gives your back weapon an actual holster to carry your rifle with. There are a bunch of different variations for this as well so you just have to look at the mod page to see which one you like the best. This one is the beta holster and I can't get enough of it. Now going back to the graphics for a bit, on top of our visual redemption overhaul we've added something called terrain textures overhaul. This mod enhances a variety of the textures in the game. So the grass, rock, and dirt textures will be of higher detail. And for even more detail, we've added YM's particles. So you can see as we ride our horse, you'll see new grass and rocks kicked up, which is added by this mod enhancing the particles. Your explosions will have more particles too, as you see, as well as some enhanced smoke effects and so on and so forth. The most notable for me are the effects added as you gallop through the road. I just love the way the grass and rocks kick up like that. Next up we'll go over a few of my combat mods. We first have remove screen effects and silent deadeye. So as you enter deadeye, you'll no longer see that yellow tint or hear the obnoxiously loud startup sound. You can go in and out of deadeye seamlessly, which makes a lot better for cinematic gameplay or trying to just keep in the moment. We've added Wine's bloodbath for all the blood effects that you see and then a mod called dismemberment to dismember all NPCs in the game. Paired with this we're using Wero as our Euphoria Ragdoll mod which adds various effects to NPCs depending on the location where you shoot them and then something called Ped Damage Overhaul which is a whole nother beast in itself. There are so many options this mod uses but it's definitely one of those mods you need to have in order to redefine combat. We also have gun effects which add some smoke effects as you fire your weapon and depending on the condition of your weapon you'll see clear white smoke or a darker smoke if your weapon isn't in the best condition. We also have a mod called Disable Black Bars which allows you to enjoy story mode in that full screen without those cinematic bars getting in the way or even in cinematic mode while you're riding your horse to your next destination. It's definitely a bit of a different experience seeing cutscenes in their full glory and I would definitely recommend it. And then last but not least is a merge of mods. This is a merge of Y in the DLC, Eastern's Epic Extras, and Gon Pachiro's Fancy Altalir. These mods add thousands of different clothing accessories for you to equip at any trapper. So you'll have a plethora of different hats, new coats for you to choose from, shirts, vests, and even different weapon accessories. There's a bunch of unique accessories added by Eastern Epics, such as this cool cosmetic backpack. And then with Gampachiero's fancy atelier, this is where you're gonna get set up with some fancy attire. So you'll literally have unlimited outfits at your disposal for your character. There's even a bunch of different cosmetics for your horse as well. So you'll have new accessories you can add on to the back of your horse as well as some new saddles for you to choose from as well. You can even add a lantern to your horse and the lantern will light up automatically at night. And I'd say it does its job pretty well. And then last but not least with this merge, you get a bunch of different hairstyles as well. So you'll have over a hundred new hairstyles to choose from as well as some new beard options as well. So you can really customize your character. I'd say the only thing with some of the hairs though is that depending on the hat you choose, you could see a little bit of clipping. So you could choose a different hat or just remove the hat altogether. Our first mod today is called Horse Hydration. 
This is a simple immersion quality of life mod that allows you to ride your horse to any body of water. Once your horse is about ankle height and you're still mounted, all you need to do is whistle. And after that, your horse will start to sip on the water. This not only is a cool animation for your horse, but this also fills up your horse's cores while at the same time overpowering them. You'll need to stay mounted on your horse during this animation, but once you're done, you just need to simply whistle once again and your horse will stop. You'll see that the cores have been overpowered for your steed and your horse will definitely thank you. A very simple mod that fits perfectly into this game. Our next mod has a little bit more horsepower. This is called Ford T-Car and this brings the iconic Ford Model T into the game. You have the custom Ford logo, working headlights for those nighttime rides, wheels that pay the bills, and then that custom cozy interior. It comes fully equipped with the steering wheel, gas and brake pedals, and your shifters. You can get this off for the low cost of free 99 and be the talk of the town in Sandy Knee. You do have a few different colors to choose from as well, as well as a new custom sound. Definitely a cool mod to add some non-immersion into your gameplay. Oh, This next mod adds a mechanic that definitely should have been in the base game. This mod is called Rustling, and this mod allows you to rustle cows, bulls, ox, sheep, and goat. All you need to do is lasso your animal, and as you get closer, you're able to have a prompt called Rustle. Once you engage the prompt, you'll see that that animal is now part of your herd. Now you can rustle up to 10 animals at a time, and once you have all the animals you need, you can take your newly rustled animals and sell them for a price. You just need to lead them outside of the pen and then mount your horse. You'll be able to pick a rustler location. Once you've picked your location of choice, your job is to get your herd to safety. So you have the option to speed up or slow down your herd, as you can see by the prompts on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, and they will simply follow you. It's just your job to keep them in line now. You have a few different locations where you can herd them to, such as Valentine, McFarland's Ranch, Emerald Ranch, and Van Horn. And depending on the animal you're herding, will depend on the price you get when you sell them. So you could make a living rustling these creatures. And once you make it to your rustling location, you're able to talk to the local rustler and sell your herd for a profit. You'll have a nice little cutscene and be on your way. Thank you, mister. This next mod is called Coulter, and it brings this dead town back to life. This mod enhances the small settlement of Coulter by adding some dynamic and interactive elements back into the environment. This mod repopulates the town with various characters and animals that all naturally interact with the environment. So no longer is the town dead, but alive. You'll see that the characters in the town all engage in activities as well to make it really feel like they were in the game in the first place. A nice little add-on to have some more towns you could either role play in or just explore. This next mod is just a fun one and it's called Looks Maxed Arthur. This gives Arthur a bigger jawline, a fixed nose, and makes his cheeks and cheekbones more defined. Arthur already got all the ladies, and now no woman is safe. Our next mod is called Quick Draw, and this mod allows you to quickly draw and fire your gun with just one key press. So you have a few different options. You can press the X key on your keyboard for a quick draw. You can hold the left mouse button to perform a quick draw, and then you can press the Z button for a quick draw and stay in Deadeye. This mod aims to give you the fastest possible quick draws in the game, and it's pretty cool. You can also configure the keybinds and the settings if you want to, so you can fully customize it. This next mod I accidentally pressed the keybind for, as you might be able to see, but it's called Unalive Yourself. And similar to the quick draw where you have custom keys, you have custom keys to use a bullet on yourself. So by pressing the T key, you'll pull out your gun and shoot yourself. But if you hold the T key, you'll have a different kind of animation. Damn, that's kind of crazy, but could be cool for some role playing opportunities. Now for this next mod, if you haven't completely finished the story, or if you don't want any spoilers, then just skip this part of the video, because this next mod is called Graves. This mod allows you to pay respect to your fallen camp members and friends. So with the various gravestones now scattered throughout the map, you're able to pay your respects. You can stand or you can kneel, really immersing yourself in the loss of a friend. You'll even be able to see the name of your accomplice and the sadness in Arthur's eyes. You're also able to press a key to say something. 
and there are various tombstones across the map where people have fallen, so you're able to pay your respects to everyone you loved. This next mod is another simple one, and it's called Hands on Belt. So after 10 seconds of just idling by, you're able to put your hands on your belt. Originally you would just have this idle in camps, but this allows you to do this idle just about anywhere. As long as you don't have your offhand holster, and you're not in combat or a mission, you can have this sleek idle animation. Now our last but not least mod is called the Spaz-12 Shotgun. This replaces the pump shotgun with a more modern looking one. You get a very cool looking model and works well, especially if you're trying to give Arthur that upgraded arsenal. So you definitely can't go wrong with this addition, Enhanced Brawling. This mod is basically a rework for Melee. It adds a bunch of new different features, animations, and even a few things from story mode that you can't do anymore after you complete certain missions. Some of the things you can expect are new grapple sequences, subdue animations, five brawling styles you can change on the fly, struggle challenges, being able to charge with your knife, shove people, kick animations and the ability to switch positions while grappling the five brawling animations you have access to are of course the default one that you know and love but you'll also have access to the winter arthur version the final fight version where you face micah with a knife the bruiser version which you've seen in story mode with that epic fight down in valentine and then you also get access to Michael's final combat style. You also kind of have a sick style, which is the auto brawling switcher. So by pressing F9 on the numpad, your fighting style will just randomly change. Now this all-in-one mod seriously comes packed with features. So this showcase won't be all inclusive, but we will go over a majority of the features this mod has to offer. We're first gonna start off with the different brawling styles. So the first one of course is the default animations. And once you install this mod, you can switch to this fighting style with either the numpad 1 button or the F1 button. And this fighting style is just the basic animations. But we're not watching this video for the basic animations, are we? So let's move on to the next one. The next one is the Winter Arthur version, which you can access with the numpad 2 button or the F2 button. With the Winter fighting style, you can see that the animations change a bit and you're able to get into a unique grapple dismiss animation that will allow you to put NPCs in an intimidated position. This will allow you to do certain actions with NPCs that will get into a little bit later. This fighting style also has a unique right side counter attack animation that you won't get with the default fighting animations. The next fighting style we have is the Bruiser style, which you can access with the numpad 3 button or the F3. This fighting style is similar to the epic fight you encounter in Valentine during story mode, and these animations are slow, but the attacks are heavy, so you're basically trading speed for more power. This fighting style offers unique subdue reversal and knockout animations. You also have different animations for the ground grapple attacks. You can also grapple from the back or the front, and then you also have a unique blocking stance. Next up we have the Micah Finale Brawling Style, which you can access with the numpad 4 or the F7 key, and you can kind of say this is the opposite of the Bruiser Style. These animations are a lot faster, but these are more of light attacks, so you'll have different animations for both the standing grapple and tackle, and this style also comes with some unique blocking animations, as well as some new dodging animations as well.
Last but not least is the Arthur Knife animations from the finale fight if you decide to go back for the money. You can access this style with the numpad 5 key or the F8 button. And all this style does is give you different knife attack animations as well as a few new parry animations. Now we'll get into a few of the extra features this mod has to offer. First up is the addition of bar brawls. So now at any time, if you head to the Valentine or the Road Saloon, you can initiate a full on bar brawl just by attacking somebody. So once you throw the first punch, everyone else will start to attack each other as well. You'll also be able to perform environmental finishers, whether that be on the table, some railing, and even be able to throw people out of the window. Next is the addition of kicks. Depending on the arrow key you press, you can have up to four different kick types. So you're able to kick or knee somebody in the chest. You can throw a regular kick, a kick that will ragdoll the NPC, and then even a kick to the leg. So as well with your hand-to-hand -hand combat, you can throw in a kick or two to really spice up combat. There's also a feature added that was only available in the online mode, and this is the ability to shove your opponents now. So as long as you're sprinting towards somebody, you were able to basically shove them to the ground. Our first mod is called the Sadie Adler Project, and this mod allows you to play as Sadie Adler with working voice lines. So you're able to talk to some NPCs, all in Sadie Adler's voice lines. It even works in combat situations and while riding your horse. The Sadie Adler project is so detailed that voice lines even change based on the time of the day. You're able to use this mod during your story mode playthrough, but the scripted encounters will still have Arthur's voice. But I'd say that is a fair trade-off. You even have access to 30 plus outfits for Sadie. You will need Rampage Trainer for this, but once you go into the player menu and then into the wardrobe, you just need to go down to the outfit variation and you can change the outfit on the fly. So whatever version of CD you're looking for, you'll be able to change that outfit whenever you want. Definitely a cool mod to play as your dream cowgirl. This next mod will actually give you a reason to explore New Austin. And this mod is called Lost Treasures of New Austin. This mod brings back hidden treasure chests from Red Dead Redemption into RDR2. This essentially brings back the treasure chests you can originally find in New Austin from the previous game into RDR2. You have 125 locations where these chests can be found. And in order to reach them all, you'll have to explore towns, the various settlements, or even platform your way up on the side of a cliff in order to reach the chest. The only question is, will you be able to find all 125 locations? There may even be some expansions coming out in the future, such as adding treasures to Mexico, the Grizzly West, and even Guarma, which would be pretty exciting. Our next mod brings in a feature you could only do on Red Dead Online, and this is called Equine Assistance. This ports the ability to pick up herbs from horseback. You'll see blips on your map icon, and now while on horseback, you'll have a prompt to pick up herbs. So once you click on the prompt, your horse will grab the herb, and then you'll grab the herb from the horse. It'll give you an amount anywhere between one and three of those herbs, but this definitely makes it convenient so you can collect seamlessly from your horse instead of dismounting every time. The next mod is another port from Red Dead Online, and this one is called Equine Ducking. This mod brings the ducking and dodging mechanism from RDO into single player. So while you're on a horse, you just need to hold the aim button and then the jump button. Whatever side you're aiming on, you will duck to the opposite side, helping you to dodge potential bullets. Next up, we have a mod called Llama's Police Overhaul. This is an overhaul of the police system and guard response that has more emphasis on stealth and evidence-based responses. 
So now police and guards won't automatically know your location without evidence. It'll be harder for the police to see you if you are crouching, as well as a bunch of other tweaks. There is a whole page of various adjustments for you to go and read, but the overall aim of the mod is to make stealth as viable as possible. So getting out of the line of sight of the police officers or gaining a height elevation advantage, it will actually be viable to stealth your way out. So definitely give this overhaul a try if you're looking for something a little bit different. Next, we have a rather handy mod, and this is called Pimpin's Weapon Compatibility Pack for YMs. This mod essentially allows you to use YMs DLC with a few of the popular gun mods, so you don't have to fiddle around with the weapon.ymt files. So you'll be able to use six weapons with the YMs DLC, such as the AK-47, allowing it to be fully automatic. You'll have access to the Pit Viper, which you can't go wrong with that, the Colt Python, the Spaz 12 shotgun, equipped with the 8 round magazine, and of course the Uzi, and this gun is a doozy. This one is fully automatic as well. This comes with the M4 Benali as well from John Wick, but for the life of me I can't get the textures to appear. Now this is only compatible with the YM's DLC version, not the enhanced edition or the RDO offline edition, so be wary of that. But this definitely makes it easy to have different weapon files in combination with YM's DLC. Now our next mod is a new Euphoria Physics mod. This mod is called A-Rep. This mod adds completely recreated shot reactions inspired by Max Payne 3. Now it's tuned for the Western experience, but it has a more exaggerated style. So you'll see reactions you haven't seen before, giving your gunplay a new feeling. The first mod we'll go over is a pet add-on called El Mariachi. This mod allows you to roleplay as a, well, Mariachi Skull Man. And this is the perfect add-on for the month of October, because this is the soul of a man who lost everything, but still searches for peace by hunting down his enemies. And this mod is pretty simple to use, so once you drop the actual file into your LML folder, you're going to need to use Rampage Trainer, and then under the player menu, you go into Wardrobe, and then into Model Changer, and here is where you're going to put in the custom input. All you have to do is type in Mariachi Skull and you will spawn in as the undead man himself. Now the next mod kind of complements this mod pretty well and this mod is called the Black Arabian Enhanced. This essentially makes the Black Arabian a lot bigger, something similar to the Turkoman sized horse if you're familiar with that, but it also gives the horse longer hair. There's also a few options for eye colors which we selected the blue of course and then if you really want it to fit the Mariachi theme. You can add these flaming hoofs with Rampage Trainer. So again, if we go into the menu, we just need to go down to the horse menu. And then if we keep scrolling down, you'll eventually see the flaming hooves option. So now you can kind of be like a mariachi ghost rider. Perfect for some Halloween roleplay. Now this next mod will be sending Arthur Morgan into World War I. This mod is called World War I Uniform Pack. And it comes with three new uniforms for you to choose from. The first uniform is the US Soldier Uniform, equipped with a canteen satchel, and item belt, and then of course a helmet, that would definitely stop a sniper shot. The next uniform is from the French, which comes with a decent looking trench coat actually. A helmet of course, a holster and some pouches, a canteen, if you know what this is, uh, let me know, and then a knife sheath. And then of course the last outfit is from the Germans. So we have the holster, some pouches, and a knife on the chest this time, as well as the trench shovel, and a bag for your rations. And this is all complemented with the all blue fit. Now to complement the World War I outfits, we have three different weapons. The first of which is the Model 1897 Trench Gun. This shotgun replaces the pump action shotgun found in game, really giving you that World War I vibe. It has some nice details, so if you truly want a role role playing opportunity in RDR2, this is something you have to get. And you're still even able to customize this gun, so you can choose different stocks, change up the colors of the metal of course, and even still put engravings. And I guess you can even put a bayonet on there. Didn't even know that. Now this next weapon was absolutely essential when it came to World War I. And this is the entrenching tool, otherwise known as the war shovel. So again, if you're trying to role play as World War I, this is absolutely essential. And then last but not least is a replacement for the Lancaster Repeater. This is the Winchester Model 1886. So we have the Winchester in the game now with a nice handy strap. And of course, this gun is also customizable as well. So you can change the metal tints, varnishes, sights, and stocks and this is fully animated as well. Now after years at war, it's time for a little reprieve. 
And what better way to get some R&R &R than to have your old families and friends reunited? This next mod is called Beecher's Hope Family Reunited. This mod adds Karen, Abe, Sadie, Charles, well, pretty much the whole gang back to Beecher's Hope. Each added character has their own dynamic interactions and routines, so it feels like Beecher's Hope is alive and booming. Definitely something to add if you feel like the end game is a little lackluster. Now our next mod is a nice and simple one, and this is called Simple Bronze Lantern. Wait, wait, what's happening? What the hell? Oh, this is the UFO thing. I've never, uh, <laughs> I've never seen this in person. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Anyway, this changes your standard lantern into a bronze version of that lantern. But I think this UFO is glorious. Okay, let me let me get some screenshot of that. Dang, look at that. Okay, we're off track now. Bye bye UFO. Now next up we have a pretty cool mod, and this is called Physical World Maps. So when you take out a map from your inventory, you have altered textures of that map. And these change the textures of the panoramic, legendary animal slash fish maps, and then the one that Charles gives you. So you can use this both as navigation and for hunting your animals. Now there are going to be a few updates in the future, so definitely keep an eye out for this mod. Now this next mod is a new graphics mod I'm trying out, and this is called Tuco Cinematic Remaster. So of course we have enhanced graphics with optimized textures, and then some new visual effects for a more immersive experience. There's been some adjustments to the lighting and the colors to try and capture a classic spaghetti western type feel, and there's been some improvements in model quality and environmental elements. So you'll see a difference in the weather temperatures, the density of the fog, the wind behavior, and a bunch of other tweaks. This mod is aimed to make the world feel more vibrant and realistic. And from the couple hours I have been playing testing this, I think it really holds up to what it said. And I haven't seen any significant frame drops, at least on my laptop. So that's definitely a plus as well. So if you're looking for a new graphic mod to test out, I can definitely give a thumbs up for this one. This also does come with an optional reshade. So if your PC can handle that, I would definitely recommend turning that on. So if we toggle the E and B on and off, you can see a bit of a difference. Now this next mod is called Ambush. And this mod introduces dynamic ambush encounters spread across the entire region of the game. So at a moment's notice, you could be attacked by a variety of different NPCs. Ambushers have random appearances, damn, and you're even able to choose the ambush frequency. There are over 70 ambush locations, and this mod automatically disables itself when in missions. This mod is also compatible with bandit hideouts, so you can add even more fun to your RDR2 gameplay. Yeah, you like that? Next up, we have a mod that's been out for, well, ages now, and this is called Sergeant Joe's Battle Creator. So by using the handy little menu, you're able to fully customize a custom battle to your liking. So you can choose to do an instant battle where Pez will spawn and they'll have an instant war. So you'll have two opposing teams trying to see who can beat who. In this case, we have the police versus the bandits. And of course, this is fully customizable. So if you choose to set up a new battle instead, you have full control of the Ped models, their health, whether they respawn or not, which weapons they have, and a bunch of other fine tuning options. Definitely give it a try if you're trying to make your own RDR2 movie. Now these last two mods are some handy ones you might like to install. This first one is Fix Social Club Crashes, and I know I've seen a lot of comments with people having this issue. So what this mod does is drastically reduce the chance of the occasional crash in the loading menu due to the Social Club login. So if you are experiencing that, give this mod a download and see if this helps reduce the amount of crashes you have when you're first logging into the game. And then next up, we have a 100% save file, which is what I use most of the time for these mod showcases because it's an easy way to get a clean save with 100% of the game accomplished. So I basically use this save file to test out different mods. If you want to see even more mod showcases for RDR2 and eventually RDR1 if there's modding for that, once it comes to PC, of course, very soon, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed today's mods and we'll see you next time.